Hey, good morning guys. Welcome, welcome to the channel. Appreciate you guys coming through. Guys, we're gonna talk about friends and relationships. Um, friends and relationships are kind of sort of the same. They intertwine with each other. Uh, a friendship becomes kind of sort of a relationship, whether it is with a man or a woman, or just a friendship between your father and your mother, or your mother and your father. Uh, it is, those are the kind of relationship that I'm talking about. Um, I remember as I was coming up here, um, when I was 14, 15, I had quite a few things going on with myself. I didn't believe in myself. I had so many things, uh, so many different things going on with me. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't function. I just didn't know what was my purpose. I didn't know what can I do? How can I do certain things? But I had people around me that became friends. I had people around me that encouraged me. I had people around me that believed in me. And those are the kind of people that I'm talking about today. There are family members who also uh, helped uh, bring me up when, when, when I didn't believe in myself, help encourage me and help push me forward and tell me that I can do certain things. Um, I've been blessed to have people around me even now who are constantly encouraging me and constantly telling me that um, there are things that I can do even though I might say otherwise. These are the kind of people that you want to surround yourself because God permits these people to be in your life for a purpose and a reason and sometimes the reason why they're in your life is because they need to be a part of you growing as an individual, even growing to the point where your purpose in life relies with that relationship. Um, there's a story in particular inside the Bible in the book of Ruth that I am amazed. I love it. Uh, I've spoken about this story before and it's about Ruth, Naomi, who have had such, such a powerful relationship and um, as the story goes on, I mean, if you haven't read it, guys, you have to take the time and read this. They were, uh, their relationship was due to the fact that Naomi was her mother-in-law. Um, and um, uh, Ruth was obviously uh, married with Naomi's son. But due to some unfortunate circumstances throughout the story, if you guys take the time to read it, uh, Naomi lost her husband. And she had to leave her hometown before, uh, before losing her husband. She left her hometown to a new town where they tried to uh, overcome some of the adversities that they were going through from their, town, for the, from their hometown originally. And um, unfortunately, in the 10 years that they spent there, her husband passed away. Um, her two sons grew up and they married these two women. One was named Orpah and the other one was named Ruth. Uh, and, and they live with each other and due to the fact that Naomi, who was their mother-in-law, believed in God and, and, and practiced um, uh, uh, Christianity, basically, um, they didn't know much about that, um, uh, how do you say, it? they didn't know much about that religion, but because they married her sons, they started believing and going into uh, the religion that has to do with, with God. And um, they grew and they learned, but Ruth became so tied tied up with a Naomi that she really truly felt that Naomi was kind of sort of like her mom. Um, and um, for some reason, you know, uh, they their, her two uh, sons died. And um, Naomi became bitter. She became bitter uh, because of the fact that she lost her husband and, and then she lost her son and she couldn't understand why. She was a faithful believer and I'm pretty sure she who resented God and felt a certain way. I mean, as you read the story, you would hear that she became bitter. Uh, and then she made a decision to go back to her hometown. When she went back to her hometown, or I'm sorry, before she went to her hometown, she told now, she told um, Ruth and she told Orpah that, she didn't have, that they didn't have to go with her to her hometown. They had no obligation to her because, you know, they can go back to their families with their mom and their dad and do what they're supposed to do for themselves. And they're not obligated to her anymore. But Ruth 
said, no, I want to go with you. I want to be a part of your life. Wherever you go, I want to be there. Please do not push me away. Um, sometimes we end up doing that in life. We go through certain situations and these people that are next to us who are truly friends of us, who want to be, become a part of our life to encourage us and uplift us, we push them away because we have our own pity party, basically. We're feeling sorry and we just don't want nobody, nobody around us. And the reality is that when you're going through certain situations, you want to have that person that can encourage you, that can push you, that can uplift you to help you go through the situation. Do not go through that situation by yourself because that is what the enemy wants for you to close yourself, for you to be in a hole and to just start soaking in all the suffering and soaking in all these situations that you have going on and then you don't get out of that it takes you longer than it should and you might not even make it out so with a friend who truly truly loves you and cares for you who has shown you that you don't want to push them away and and you want to keep them by your side and ruth kept pushing naomi telling her no i want to be a part of you i want to go with you and if so be it. If we die, for whatever reason, I want to be buried next to you. I mean, that was the kind of relationship that Ruth had with Naomi. And um, like that story, uh, and so powerful story, um, there are so many stories in the Bible, but this one in particular, I love. And, and, it, and because they were so close to each other and they had a bond, there was, it wasn't a coincidence. There's, there was a reason they could not move forward in what God wanted for each and every one of them till they became intertwined with each other because their purpose in life had to do with one another. And God permits that to happen to us with different relationships. In order for you to grow, in order for you to um, find your purpose in life, there's a certain someone that you might have to meet or you might have to spend the time with because there's something that you are to get from them so that you can grow or even then become a part of your growth. Uh, so much so that while they're helping you, they don't even know that you're also helping them. There was people in my life who took the time to help me out. I can speak about a friend right now who I've known for three years uh, who's, who's known as Senen uh, Riveras, who works with me, uh, but he's known to us as Kano. Great person. Uh, in the time that he's been working with me, not only have I been able to, um, you know, break bread with the guy, uh, but we've had shared um, quite a few stories about each other, uh, about you know, how respectful he is and how loving he is with his wife and his kids. Uh, he has spoken to me about the respect that he has and, and the honor that he has towards his parents. Showed me a lot in, uh, in those conversations uh, because I've had issues with my parents. And he always told me, well, you know, regardless of the fact they're your parents, uh, I have issues with my brother and, and my sisters. And he would always tell me, well, regardless of the fact those are your brothers. Those are your sisters. That's blood of your blood. You have to forgive them. This and that or whatever. So he's always been that part uh, of my life positive. And he's a friend who I know it's not a coincidence. God put him there. Kind of like Naomi and Ruth. There's a reason why they were together. Um, there's a reason why they spend time. And... Um, which is crazy because Kano is uh, going to be leaving us uh, soon, uh, but I hope to still stay in contact with him and maintain our friendship. He's been a, a great friend and uh, has turned into more of a friend, kind of sort of like a brother. Um, I hope, guys, that whoever is in your life right now, who that, truly, who that person who you truly know that is real friend, especially that has maintained their um, friendship with you throughout the situations whether they're good or bad because when you're really going to know who's your friend is when you're going through bad situations and they still stick around you like kind of like right here i mean ruth did not turn her back on naomi when she was pushing her away she stayed with her she had no obligation with her because this time around guess what ruth has lost her husband who was naomi's son 
So therefore, Naomi was no longer her mother-in-law, so she had no obligations to her, but yet she remained and stayed with her when she was trying to push her away because she wanted to be by herself because she was bitter. But yet, Ruth went with her and they both became closer than ever and they grew with each other and they grew out of poverty. They grew in wealth. It's just amazing. Just take the time, guys, and read this, the, the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth. Um, it will bless you. I want to read um, Proverbs 17 17 and it says a friend loves at all times and a brother is born from a time of uh, adversities like I was saying my friend Kano uh, was a friend from the very beginning is a friend right now but he became a brother to me due to my adversities a lot of the times where I was going through different situations I spoke to him, he spoke word to me, positive word, and will always remain with me when he didn't have to. Uh, I, I can't um, thank him enough for that. Proverbs 18, 24. One who has unre unreliable friends soon come to ruins. Both, But there is a friend who sticks Closer than a brother. How many of those kind of people do you have in your life? I just mentioned one for me. And like him, I have quite a few otherwise other than, than him. Um, Proverbs 13, 20 says, Walk with wise and become wise. For a... For a companion of fools suffers harm. Uh, that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, my grandmother used to always say to me, um, tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. Basically, if you walk with fools, you're, you're most likely going to become one. Um, it, it's a powerful message. Uh, I think that we all have friends that act a fool. It doesn't mean that we should turn our back on them we should help them when they need help and we should always consult them if we can and if we give them if we can give them good advice you should and always pray for them instead of speaking bad about them uh, that's always a positive thing to do sometimes you can lead a horse to water and not make them drink and these fools <laughs> sometimes you can only do nothing you can't do nothing but to pray for them but that's better than just quitting on them john 15 13 says, they're the greatest love you can have for your friend is to give your life for them. Now, the only person that has ever done that and is going to do that is God. There's many people that might say that to you, but let's be real. A lot of people say that. Uh, they say that just because they say that, but at the time when it needs to happen, they might it might might be otherwise, but you don't have to do that. I mean, there's other ways for you to demonstrate your friendships. And, and, and I'm going to read you something uh, from the student Bible that relates to that passage. And it says, we are to love each other as Jesus loved us. And he loved us enough to give his life for us. We may not have to die for someone, but there are other ways to practice sacrificial love. Listening, helping, encouraging, giving. Think of someone in particular who needs this kind of love today. Give all the love you can and then try to give a little more. Uh, like I was saying uh, before, sometimes you will come across someone who needs that encouragement. Sometimes you're going to come across someone who needs that push. I remember being that someone. I remember needing someone to encourage me, to encourage me, and I needed someone to push me, someone to believe in me because I didn't believe in myself. As a young man, 
uh, living with my grandmother and not having uh, that male figure, not even having the mom figure either, but as a young man, you need more of the man figure. Um, not to take it, not to take anything away from the, the woman, but as a man, you need that. And uh, I had certain people in my life, like my uncle, who, who pushed me, who, who um, encouraged me, who told me that I can do certain things, that I am a great person, that I am capable. Uh, there was someone who, by the name of Jose, who, who was a, uh, a boyfriend of my, my aunt, back in those days, who always looked out for me, who encouraged me, who helped me also, who believed in me. Um, like him, uh, I have uh, quite a few cousins of mine who are close to me, who are more than my cousins. They're like my brothers and they're friends and I can talk to them at any time and they always believed in me and they always encouraged me. Uh, and um, these are people that God appoints in our life. These are people that God puts there for a reason and a purpose and, and sometimes the reason for them being there is to push you to take you to the next level and sometimes they're even a part of where you're supposed to be or where you're supposed to or who you be supposed to become and uh, if you have an opportunity where you can become this person where you can encourage someone where you can push someone where you can give someone that love where you can listen to what they have to say where you can actually, if they're incapable of doing certain things, but you have the ability of doing that for them, take a chance. Do that for them. Believe it or not, it's going to become more of a blessing to you than it is to them. And the only reason why I say that, because in the process of you trying to help them, in the process of you trying to encourage them, they're going to show you something about yourself that you didn't realize you had in you. And that's something that God deposits in our heart. Uh, we're supposed to love each other. We're supposed to help each other. Part of the reason why God doesn't give one individual everything is so that your head doesn't get big enough and you think that you can do everything by yourself and you don't need no help from no one. Part of the reason why God humbles you and shows you that there are certain things that you cannot do is so that you can ask, can you help me? So that you can learn what they have to offer you. And vice versa. There's things that you have that they don't have. And you're going to bless them by teaching them that. So it is good if you can become the friend that that person needs for you to uplift them. Uh, it's going to truly be a blessing for your life and their life as well. Become a mentor. Help someone other than yourself. Believe in the fact that regardless of what's going on. If they're pushing you away and you truly love them and you truly care for them, that's when they mostly need you most. Uh, pray for them. Uh, speak word of blessing to them at all time and overall be patient. If you can take the time and read these scriptures and go into Proverbs where, where there's so many things in, in Proverbs that will teach you wisdom and be wise, do that, guys. Just wanted to... Uh, Speak about that because I am taking the time uh, right now to, to uh, mentor someone, to help someone, to uplift them, to push them, and even encourage them. And as I am taking the time and doing this, I am realizing that there was a time where I was this young man. There was a time where I couldn't do certain things, and I needed that certain someone, and God permitted those people to be around me, and now I can pay it forward. So if you can, please do. Pay it forward. There's so many people out there that can use words of wisdom, that can use words of encouragement. And it, it won't only be a blessing to them, but it would be a blessing to you. I guarantee.